Hi everyone. So are we all one? The short answer is yes, but don't switch off just yet. People who have had mystical experiences or psychedelic experiences can often be left with some insight that is incredibly hard to put into words. And they might say something like, we are each other, I am you, you are me. But these insights come about when the sense of being a separate self, the category that we put around our organism and say, that's me separate from the world, when that drops away and you realize that there's a single unified universe that produces all these different beings that aren't actually separate from the world, but are features of the world. From that perspective, where you're no longer looking out through your eyes, but you're imagining how it is you're you're seeing not from some you know some kind of uh magical you know vantage point where you can see how it all is but it just becomes obvious that you and i are both humans on equal footing because the ego makes me feel most of the time makes us feel not just me that we are the one that's important if i'm hungry i eat if you're hungry I don't run out and get you food immediately. I'm more concerned with the functioning of, of my organism. And that's the point of the ego. But when the ego falls away, you're suddenly confronted with the fact that we're both two humans and we both emerged out of the same kind of ground of being that brings organisms into existence. And so there's an absolute equivalence and given that there's no self, there's no additional soul, there's no identity apart from the stuff, this process that makes up James. If you wanted, if I wanted to think what would it be like to be you? To somehow take my essence and put it into you and vice versa. Well, you can see from this perspective that that would be impossible. It would be impossible because there is no essence. There's James over here and you're over there. And so the situation of what, you know, saying, what would it be like if I was you? It would be like this. It would be like this exact moment where the thing over there feels like the thing over there, and the thing over here feels like the thing over here. And it's this perspective where you want to say something like, we are each other, all of us. We are every organism in the world. But that language, our language evolved built on the concepts of our brain, like I. And so we say things like, I am you. Well, the whole point is that there is no I and there is no you, right? So we're trying to use these concepts that don't apply anymore to point to something really astounding about the nature of reality and something that is actually incredibly simple, but is really hard to grasp because the ego is always trapping us in the self-concern. But when you drop the self-concern, it becomes obvious that your suffering is absolutely as important as my suffering from an objective standpoint. And that's what we're talking about. When you drop the, drop the ego, you're no longer coming from the point of view of this subject who's so self-concerned. You're being far more objective. And the issue of suffering this is actually a good way of seeing the sense in which we all are each other, or however you want to say it. Because if you take the case, imagine that it's the case that when you have surgery and you undergo anesthesia, imagine the way that those anesthetics work isn't to knock out your consciousness, but instead it has the effect of paralyzing you. So you experience the entire surgery and then at the end of it, it has an amnesic effect where it wipes out that memory. And so you wake up and you're like, oh, I don't remember anything. I guess I was entirely unconscious, right? There's no way of knowing that's not how anesthetics work, which is a, a scary thought, right? And so when you feel that fear of what if that's, what if next time I have surgery, there will be the experience of excruciating pain of being operated on, followed by James waking up and feeling fine. You might be able to see there that this, that's one way of seeing the way that the self isn't what we think it is. 
because there is a being, there is a system having a negative experience during the surgery, but the James who wakes up and tells the story, that's not part of his narrative. That's not part of that self. And so from my perspective right now, if I imagine sympathy for my past self, say, if I've had surgery in the past and I think, God, that would have been awful for the, the for me back then, for the system back then, and the suffering it was going through, but it doesn't exist here anymore. So there's a sense of, what do I do with that? Do I worry about that as me? Well, the ego doesn't worry about that because it's not me that had that experience. And so when you drop that ego, the feeling of sympathy is obviously there for me in the past undergoing that surgery. And there's equivalence between me in the past undergoing that surgery and you right now. If, you're in, if you have pain, that pain exists in a system in the world, in a living organism, but this ego is not concerned with it directly because it can't do anything about it. I'm not saying I'm not concerned about you, but in the same way that this ego is not currently concerned with the, the problem of whether I'm aware, whether there is awareness during anesthesia, during a surgery. And the ego, ego James can actually say, I don't really, I'm not that bothered by the idea of if they're suffering in the surgery, because that's not this narrative, that's not this self. But the more, when you drop the ego, the more objective, compassionate view is, we obviously have concern for that part of ourselves, that being that will be suffering in the hospital. And we should have equal concern for every living creature when it suffers.